so if, what we do is now with RPES, one can, of course, one can do laser or low energy photo emission, but one can also do a photon energy dependence and check. With the photon energy uh, variation is rela directly related to the KZ dispersion, perpendicular dispersion. So if I have a surface state in a three-dimensional material, very easy to figure out. I, I measure KZ dispersion photon energy dependence. One can see that the stuff I see at the Fermi level, it has no dispersion within my measurement uncertainty level. But the state below, it has crazy dispersion. This is the bulk band, and this is the surface band. So I label them ahead of time. So this is actually a surface state. It's not a bulk state. That's why when I suggested my colleague to uh, uh, hold up the system, it never worked, because I always getting, there's no way to, get, somehow there's no way to get rid of the surface state. Okay. So this is my bulk band. It's coming from this thing. Okay. And it's a bit more complicated because at some momenta, the surface band and the bulk band coincide. The boundary condition is such that they coincide. It creates a surface resonance. And it turns out this Dirac point is near that surface resonance. Okay. So with that, we can, uh, we can then calculate. Uh, my students have done this. They did LDA calculation on, on this uh, on this composition. And uh, so by doing that, they located, uh, they calculated the bulk band structure. These thick uh, solid lines are bulk band structure. And one can see that when I take the corresponding cut, I have this band, this band. They correspond to the bulk band. They're slightly off in K space, but they, they're there. But this is, this is new. This is not in the bulk LDA or tight binding calculation, so this must be the surface state. It has no origin in the bulk calculation, at least the calculation done by my student. Did you say that this doping? Is that what you said? At this composition. It has this. But where? But in LDA? Sorry. Well, I mean. Are you assuming the lattice constant? Yeah, this is, this is just uh, rigid, rigid. You just move the lattice. Yeah, yeah. Know, yes. Something. For this. This, this what, is, what is the role of the antimony? Kind of the same question. It's, it it's, it's randomly, randomly. But it is, it's, what's it doing? It's just changing the lattice constant? It is just changing the lattice That's constant. The so the role of antimony uh, uh, to a significant extent is pressurize the system. I'll get to that, what it does. It actually inverts. It, just like in uh, mercury cadmium uh, uh, quantum well where this uh, spin Hall effect was confirmed, it goes through inversion. This system does the same thing, but in a three-dimensional way. OK, so uh, now in this set of data, there is a flat band. It's actually folded by a beam harmonic. It's actually bismuth shallow core level. Bismuth has large spin orbit coupling and shallow core level. So this is a bulk band. And then again, one can see that uh, this is the surface band. And near L point, there is a resonance. So these two are bulk band, but one can see the Dirac point has resonance because uh, bulk and surface bands are degenerate there. OK, so then we worried about, we found a band insulator wrapped in a metallic surface state. What good is that? Is it of any use? So then we started talking with our colleagues, Holden and Hughes and other people. At, uh, Holden seemed to have this paper back in the 80s, this quantum Hall effect without magnetic field, without external, uh, without Landau levels. And condensed matter, I forgot the title, condensed matter analog of parity and emoly, something like that. I never understood that paper. <laughs> but uh, what I understand is that in a conventional quantum Hall system, your bulk gap opened by the magnetic field, and you have cyclotron resonance. That's your uh, gap. Uh, but if your time reversal invariance is preserved, then you can get that through a spin, spin orbit coupling, intrinsic spin orbit coupling. So that uh, then one can work out. I borrowed a slide from Xu Zhang Zhang, this uh, spin hull conductance, and, uh, and then this dissipationless edge 
uh, spin currents are robust because of TRI forbids elastic backscattering. You have topological protection there. Okay, so one can, I don't need theoretical introduction to this community, but uh, this is spin hull effect. So I, I spoke with Nagaosa, how do I know a material is a candidate for a spin hall effect? So he tried to explain this Fafian to me, which I never understood. Then we, we spoke with other. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see. I hope Faf Mr. Fafian is not. <laughs> Okay, so I understood this paper. Uh, there, uh, there is an easier solution if the system has inversion symmetry. And then what you have to do this, you have to uh, figure out what is the Z2 invariant, which relates to parity of block wave functions at time reversal invariant momenta. And uh, the boundary states of quantum Hall effect, 1D edge states, they go into 2D surface states. And that's fantastic because now I can do RPS. And I had, I learned beforehand that the surface states I observed, there's no way to get rid of them. Okay, so what are the, what are such things? Well, Is sorry, I'm just confused because I, in your LDA calculation you had these. There's no spin-orbit coupling? No, no, there is uh, oh. not LD, actually tight binding with spin-orbit coupling. Oh, that with, had spin orbit, didn't Yes, tight binding had spin-orbit in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, but the bulk band structure is uh, the deeper lying bands. You, they don't That's care whether exactly whether you have spin orbit coupling or not. So my purpose was to compare with the bulk deeper lying bands. Okay. So uh, so there are two types of surface surface states. One type is like this, which cannot be perturbed away, but there are other surface states that can be perturbed away. And uh, these surface, you need to watch how many times they cross formula level <laughs> at the time reversal invariant momenta. And uh, it turns out if, if you take a pair of time reversal invariant momenta, uh, then, then uh, if it crosses one odd number of times, you get non-trivial Z2. If it crosses even number of times, then, uh, uh, then it's a trivial thing you might be able to get rid of that. <laughs> so Shu Chang gave me this slide that graphene has very weak spin orbit coupling. Uh, and uh, gallium arsenide, same case, then he has this prediction on mercury telluride. And uh, he argued that this uh, uh, one should be able to, by changing well thickness, one should be able to uh, observe this topological quantum phase transition. So I looked up this uh, band structure. So in that case, it goes back to her question, this what does antimony do in the system? Uh, so what antimony does, it leads, okay. So in mercury telluride, you have this, it's metal. You have this gamma, six, gamma eight, gamma six <coughs> bands. As you pressurize the system by putting cadmium in there, it, it leads to this inversion and it turns it into an insulator. So without knowing that, we, uh, we, we were doing that already. We were putting antimony into the system and it inverted the band. That's why, okay, so let me jump into that. So what Fu and Kane told us that if you put antimony in the system, uh, they already had a paper, bit, but in our case, we had this other stuff. So uh, it leads to this symmetric and symmetric band inversion. And accidentally, we were already looking at this regime in the band inverted regime when you are past the Dirac point. And that allowed us to locate the Kramer's degenerate point. Otherwise, we would not be seeing that. Uh, because now you have opened up a gap and the Kramer's point is in between. Okay, so uh, so the fact that actually 10% is the one I showed the data on, 9% also has this divergence. So we are indeed in that regime. If you take, this is pure bismuth. It's metallic, semi-metallic. In this case, it's almost insulating. 
Okay. So uh, a band insulator uh, should uh, Fermi surface on a band insulator would be like this. You have actually in this particular compound, it is expected. Well, nobody has calculated that. Our finding is that it's like that. You have this Fermi surface. You have one pocket here, another pocket here. This is shared. And it turns out when you enter into the inverted regime, somehow this will fractionalize. And now you see you had one, two, three, four crossing. Now you have, because of fractionalization, you have five crossing. In the inverted regime, now your Z2 number would be negative. I thought you said you opened up a gap. Huh? <coughs> no, no, this is... Uh, this is surface for me surface in the bulk band insulator. I did, I'm not showing the band insulator. I'm not showing the bulk band. This is the surface for me surface on on the so insulator. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. Surface state is metallic. So underlying band is yeah. So have you checked the Q antibody case? Why x is equal to uh, one? Q Q antibody. Have you checked the first surface of that? Uh, and the surface? No, we haven't looked at that. Yeah, but uh, according to your argument, the pure antibody has already has inverted. Uh, yeah, it would be in interesting. Well, I, that is not my argument, though. Uh, we have to observe. We have to measure and see if, if that is there. Yeah, but we can, uh, so yeah. What's the statement here? <laughs> OK. So the statement here, okay, this is actually uh, cleaner. Uh, I'm interested to measure the bulk and the surface electronic structure and their connectivity. So since it is, I cannot measure both bulk and surface electronic structure with same photon energy, I have to uh, add data from, dif from different experiments. So this is, uh, in this case, this is just schematics. These shaded regions are bulk electronic structure below the Fermi level. This is what we did not measure, unoccupied part, Arpest doesn't measure. So this is just schematic. So I kept the surface measurement, just the surface state measurement. So I see a crossing here, a crossing here, crossing here, crossing here, crossing here. And these two, gamma and M are they form a pair of time reversal invariant momenta. So I just count how many times they cross the Fermi level. They cross for odd number of times. And uh, what happens in Bismuth? So the interesting part is what happens here, near M bar point. So this cut is critical. From here to here, this is the, uh, I, I'm, I mean, there should be a gap. It's very little gap, but in the scale, there should be a gap. So I have to count, compare bismuth and other, other concentrations near this cut. So this is what I'm comparing. If I go to bismuth, if I take that cut, my band is below the Fermi level. So it had four crossings. But if I go to this band inverted regime, I have one more crossing coming from here. So there's no intensity here, but here there is intensity. It's weak, but it's not band crossing. It's better seen in the raw data than the image. So this is the main difference. So in other, other words, there is some sort of topological change. I do not know what, how to classify that on experimental ground, but in the band inverted regime, there is a topological change. That's all I can confirm. Could you say, it's just a firm surface topology is changing. Isn't that a better, or is, isn't that equivalent statement? Yeah, it is.